Hi, my name's Melissa, and I'm part of the marketing and sales team here at Urco Automation. Today, we're going to be looking at one of Urco's most recent robotic welding solutions. This automated system was designed to assist a manufacturer of fuel cells. Essentially, there are two sides to the system. On the front side is where the initial loading takes place. On the second side is where the robotic welding happens. There are a few unique things about this system. First, the adaptive fill welding in combination with laser seam tracking. Second, the advanced CMT and CMT mix process for aluminum welding from Feronius, which not only gives appearance, but also spatter-free welding on these tanks. Then, there's the system's ability to do not only aluminum, but also carbon steel, stainless, copper brazing, and more exotic materials, ferrous and non-ferrous. So there's a tool changer in different torch heads. Fourth, the unique shell to end cap fit up that eliminates the need for manual manipulation of the parts to get a good fit. And fifth, its ability for production monitoring to show the productivity of the cell. This system was designed to handle variable parts in different sized and shaped tanks. So whether you have a dedicated line of fuel tanks, water heaters, or you're building propane tanks, this system has the ability to be modified to meet your needs by simply changing out the tooling. Besides the Urco designed and built equipment on this automated robotic system, we've also integrated some great technology, such as the KUKA robots, model number KR16R1610, the Servo robot servo seam tracking, and the Feronius TPSI power supplies, taking advantage of the CMT process. Each of these added technologies are important to the automation of the cell. If you have any questions about the chosen integrations, please reach out to our team. But the rest of this video will focus on how this cell comes together. Before we go too much further, let's chat about safety. We have found that when we explore with our customer what's the safest way to manufacture a product, it usually ends up being the most cost-effective system design as well. Eliminating hazards and elements that put people at risk are all big considerations for automated systems today. In a synchronized robotic system like this one, the potential for harm is greater because of the inherent nature of servo motors. We want to safeguard anyone from being in the path of uncontrolled motion or pre-programmed motions. We also want to minimize the potential hazards associated with welding. In addition to some of the obvious standard practices of integrating e-stops and safety PLCs, here are some examples of how we've helped to eliminate the risks on this system. First, the fencing and guarding around the entire cell provide a protective barrier from the welding process and arc. It has two maintenance gates that provide access to the robot zone and are equipped with safety interlocking switches that prevent the system from operating if not properly secured shut. Then, there's also a programmable laser light curtain that recognizes when something or someone enters the designated workspace. If this happens, an emergency e-stop condition is triggered, forcing all motion and processes to be stopped immediately. The drop-down door on the front loading side is an added physical feature to, again, minimize the potential of an operator being in the hazardous zone while things are in motion. The KUKA robots also have a safety feature called Safe Operations, which allows you to create a safe no-go area in the robotic software. This allows for the robot to work safely near the work area, but if it approaches the fence or a critical component in your work cell, the robot will emergency stop, keeping the vital fencing or equipment safe. Now let's take a closer look at how the system all comes together. On the front side is a pneumatic lift table that supports and holds the fuel cell. The end caps are introduced and then held in place with vacuum assist on a tooling plate specifically designed for a particular tank or vessel. You'll notice two synchronized headstocks here to assist during the assembly and later for the robotic welding. The headstocks have the ability to transverse on a beam to match the varying lengths of the fuel cells or the vessels being welded in this system. What you can't see in these video clips is that each headstock has a through-hole design, allowing for the passage of air to an integrated vacuum that holds the end cap and a brush ground for the weld return lead. The operator loads the tank and the end caps onto the table, presses go on the operating station, and the sequence cycle begins with the headstocks compressing so the end caps are fitted, the drop door comes down, and the loaded tank is rotated to the back half of the system where the robotic welding will commence. The second half of the system is where the welding takes place. There are two synchronized robots that are tasked with this operation. Each robot is equipped with laser seam tracking. The seam tracking sensor technology is mounted parallel to each robot weld torch. The sensors are capable of precisely following the weld joint in combination with the headstock motion, Feronius weld equipment, and KUKA robots. 
These sensors send feedback to the weld equipment based on the material and joint conditions to make process adjustments. The primary purpose of seam tracking is to ensure that the torch is in the optimum position to deliver the welding wire to the joint, including height and centering of the wire in the gap. Using the information it reads, the laser seam tracking technology will automatically make the subtle torch attitude adjustments required to ensure the best possible weld can be produced for that weld joint profile. Not only does this robotic welding system have seam tracking, which is fairly common, it also is equipped to perform adaptive fill welding. Adaptive fill allows for the correct weld process to be deployed to address the variability seen by the seam tracking for gap and height mismatch of the materials in a particular joint to be welded. It does this in a way that is just about as close to AI as you can get. Without any human intervention, the robot selects and calls out predetermined weld procedures to address the anomalies in the joint. Options such as increasing the amperage and wire feed, increasing the weave or the motion of the torch to span the gap, adjusting the travel speed of the robots, or even adjusting the rotation speed of the headstocks are all choreographed into an elaborate program to take advantage of the modern technology available in today's power supplies. In addition to addressing gap control, which can be a challenge on most automated systems, other key benefits to using adaptive fill is that there are fewer stop-starts, less rework, and less human intervention required. The system is more capable of making the appropriate changes to maintain a good quality weld on all the parts introduced to the system. This system is also equipped with the ability to turn on Urco Pulse, a subscription-based production monitoring package that provides data insights and key performance indicator information to customers. The system can provide information about machine performance, downtime events, production statistics, throughput, efficiencies, and more. The collected data is accessed on a cloud database and automatically shows real-time connection to the system, showing interactive reports on things such as production output, cycle times, downtime events, maintenance, and more. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please email our team at info at ercoautomation.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos like this, or visit our website at www.ercoautomation.com.